Hi, in this problem we have an improper integral and we're being asked if it converges or if it diverges. Which one is it? There's a couple of ways to work this out. Uh, method one would be to actually integrate this, which might be quite challenging. In that case, if we get a number uh, as the result, then the answer is converges, otherwise it is diverges. I'm not quite sure how to integrate this. So let's take method two, which is to use some convergence tests. So the first convergence test uh, we should know about is called the p-test. The p-test basically says if you have the improper integral, say from one to infinity, and you can use any number here, a positive number will work, x to the p, the x, that this converges if p is greater than one, and it diverges if p is less than or equal to one. That's called the p-test. So here you see it's almost uh, like one over x squared, in, in which case it would converge. But you have a sine squared function here. So there's another test we have to use. It's called the comparison test. Comparison test. And the comparison test basically says if you have two functions, say f and g, and f is less than g on some interval, say from a to infinity, where a is, let's say, positive or greater than or equal to zero, for simplicity, then if the bigger one converges, so say g converges, then the smaller one also has to converge. And that should make sense, right? If you think of this improper integral as an area and this one as an area, then you can say, okay, this is the graph of g, let's say, and we know that f is smaller than g. But if the improper integral of g converges, that means that g has a finite area. Uh, since f is smaller, it must also have a finite area. So pretty intuitive in some sense, right? f is smaller than g. If g has a finite area, then f also has one. Conversely, we could say that if the improper integral of f diverges, well, if it doesn't have a finite area and g is bigger, then g should also certainly not have a finite area. So then g also uh, diverge. Okay, so in this problem, let me just go ahead and write it again down here so we can see it more clearly. So it was from one to infinity, sine squared x dx. Oops, or <laughs> uh, sine squared x over x squared dx. I believe, I believe that was the problem. Yes, yes it was, okay. And so we are aiming for convergence because it looks like one over x squared. So we'll start by writing down the integrand. So this is our f in the comparison test. And we know that the sine of x is less than or equal to one, so sine squared of x is certainly less than or equal to one. So sine squared of x is less than or equal to one, no issues there. Also, uh, everything here is greater than uh, greater than or equal to zero. Actually, I believe this is greater than or equal. It doesn't have to be greater than. Uh, it allows for equality here, because this could be zero. And we know something uh, about uh, the improper integral of one over x squared. So we know that this improper integral from one to infinity, the x converges by the p-test. since p is two, which is bigger than one. Remember, it converges if p is bigger than one and diverges if p is less than or equal to one. So we have that f is less than or equal to g. So in other words, our integrand is less than or equal to, it's smaller than the integrand of a convergent integral. So again, the, inter the integrand of our improper integral is smaller than the integrand of a convergent integral. Therefore, our improper integral also should converge by the comparison test. So therefore, our original integral, I'll just say OG, OG means original, converges by the comparison 
test. That's it. That, that concludes everything. So I hope this has been helpful. Hopefully even just a little bit made sense and you've learned something. Good luck.